Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland, and in this episode, we'll be trying to get some real tactile feedback from this G29 shifter that, out of the box, is quite vague and, well, uninvolving, to be honest. <laughs> so we turn to the guys at 3D Wrap for some help. We'll be reviewing two of their mods for this G29 shifter, the Stronger Clamps mod and the Improved Feel mod. So let's get to it. So now we can take a look at the mods that we're going to be doing to our shifter. And first we'll look at what they call the Stronger Clamps mod. And what that is are Stronger Clamps. <laughs> and it's got three pieces here. The main thing that's going on here is we have a clamp that's going to replace the existing clamps on our shifter. And you can see these clamps are thin and they have this very hard plastic to the teeth on them. Here, look around that way. Yeah, the, the teeth on here are really, there's no give whatsoever to them. And they still do the job, they still clamp this down, but with these, what we're going to do is actually and you can see the difference here, I think, in the comparison. See the load-bearing difference that we have here with this one. Much wider. In fact, it, it looks like it's almost close to twice as wide as that clamp. Which, of course, more load-bearing surface when we're clamping something down, the stiffer it's going to be. Of course, it's all relative to the stiffness of the rest of the case, as you might imagine. And, yeah, these actually have a rubberized, or really what this is, is a 3D printed TPU material, which is bendable and rubbery, not real rubbery, sticky rubber. In fact, I'll take him one off here, there it is, and give you a closer look at it here, and try to give you an idea what that texture looks like on it. And of course, it's very flexible, easy to bend, and it's a much better surface than what we have to work with already, though, on the shifter. And yeah, this is, this is definitely, you know, because it's rubbery, it's going to compress a little bit, so that's going to add to the adhesion to whatever we're clamping it to, your desk or whatever it is, a piece of metal. And yeah, it's going to be much better, I, I would have to imagine, than the stock ones. And the black part is all 3D printed also, and you can see there's their 3D wrap logo and little Italy imprinted on it. And on the top and the bottom, we have these hex-shaped holes, and those are to capture the nuts that are existing right now inside of these guys. And we'll see that once we take it apart. And you can see they've actually hollowed, we've got six holes on the bottom here. They, the only purpose they serve is to save TP, or rather the uh, PLA material that they're using to print this part with. Now this is a very hard part. So it's, it's very stiff, you can hear it. And then when we do it on that, you can see a lot difference in the noise. So yeah, pretty simple, not much to it, except for it did take, uh, somebody had to obviously make the CAD design for this and convert it to the .stl file so we can put it to, send it to a slicer and print it. And then we have this one. Can you get what, guess what this is for? <laughs> it's for this anti-twist mechanism here, this little plastic screw that they put in here. And all this does is fit right on top of it. So now when we actually tighten this, once you tighten the two table clamps, then we'll tighten this to try to, and that helps keep it from rotating when we're shifting real hard. But with this rubbery piece on it, obviously, or not rubbery, but the T TPU piece on there, it's going to be much better than just this plastic top here that slides around, it's very slick on the top. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be better than that. So just from looking at this kit, I have to say confidence is pretty high that this is gonna work out pretty good as far as holding it onto a desk or whatever it is you're clamping to. I'll be clamping it to some 40 series A20 profile and we'll see how that works out. So yeah, easy enough to do this. Again, both of these mods are pretty easy, but the other one's just a little bit more involved and that is this one. They call this the Improved Feel Mod. And this is the version three. There's a little instruction sheet there if you want to take a look at that. And again, it's not real complicated what we're doing here, but I, I kind of like the design and what they've done here. And I'm very anxious to see how it in actually applies when you're actually shifting, if it really does improve the feel. 
And what it consists of is we're going to replace the ring here and this leather boot. So the leather boot and the ring will not be going back on. This will go on in place of that. And this is a, uh, another PLA 3D printed part. You can see the logo. And this says version 3.1 on it. And of course, it has a gate in it for us. And we have the bolts that are going around or the screws that are going to go around and, and secure this. If you see on the side here, you can see how shallow this is. It's, it's a deep from here, but it's, it's shallow right here. So the screw will, can travel the whole length and still go into our shifter case. And we don't have to replace these screws with longer ones. So well thought out on their part, save some money by not having to provide any screws on there because we can use the existing ones. Now, if you look at the side here, it has a hole here and another hole over here. And the same thing on this other side. And internally, we also have a hole here. Oh, well, this is going to show up. There we go. We can see them there. Two holes there. And on the reverse side, the same thing. A couple of holes in there. Now, this is directional. So on one side of this, these little flanges here that, are, that, are gonna, that our bolts are going to go through, and our bolt goes through like this, and it'll go through this other one like that, and then we'll secure it with a nut on this top piece here. Now, again, I don't know how well this is going to show up, but if I let me just stick this through here on the other side, I see a hole I can kind of show it a little bit better, I think. So there is actually a slot cut in here with another hex shape to it. So it will actually capture the nut that's included as part of the hardware kit to keep it from turning as we're turning the bolt to actually tighten everything up. So yeah, we got one on each side for that. So the bolts will go in this way and we'll tighten from this side, whichever side that looks like towards the right side if we're going from back to front, because this is the rear and that's the front. I'm pretty sure, yeah, we even have an arrow in there for direction. So this is the front part. Now, what we're going to be putting in this is this guy. And it's going to slip right over top of the shifter shaft. All right. And you can see it's got some, it has some tight spots in here and then some indentations on both sides. Now, this is a pretty tough PLA also. And this has actually got version 3.2 printed on it. So this is the latest version of this piece. And this is, in that, from what I understand, the website is actually printed from a, a harder PLA with a higher durometer rate than normal PLA, whatever, whichever that is. And that was going to make it stiffer, make it last longer, because remember, we've got a, a shaft in here that's going to be shifting back and forth and catching these little indentations as it shifts. And eventually, these sides are going to wear down smooth, and in in even with the indentations, or maybe not even, but close to them, and that's going to lose some of that tactile feedback that we're doing this to achieve. So it's going to be going away. I'm going to actually put some liberal grease in here, liberal amounts, rather, of grease to try to minimize that wear. But yeah, this on their website, they even claim that this is a wearable part and you can replace it. Uh, so I'm not sure. I guess you can replace it whenever you feel like you need to replace it. And everybody will have a different tolerance for that, I guess. Now, these holes on each end of this are actually what's going to be riding. Let's go ahead and just do a quick little mock up with it here. Roll it in this way with my pointer. My pointer is just the right diameter to do this. Right. So this is going to, obviously, we're going to have a shaft going here, a bolt going here. And first off, let me just show you what these bolts look like. That might help. And they're little machine bolts. They're not little. They're actually kind of long, but they're small. They're about, I think, a four, maybe. Maybe even a three. Yeah, maybe a four. But they're pretty small. And the machine threads, so that they're actually going to go into our nuts that are they include with it. See a little nut there? And that's the nut that's going to be captured in the little hexagon slot that I mentioned before. This bolt is going to slide through these pieces of plastic that they give you. And this is pretty stiff plastic. So that's going to actually let this mechanism ride on the red part. So when it's sliding back and forth, it'll be riding on that. But I'm just simulating it with my pointer here. Right. That explains it, right? So now this thing will be sliding back and forth as we're shifting, going from the first gear all the way over to the sixth gear. So it gives us that sliding motion as the shaft is actually going in between that up back and forth. Right. Again, 
I kind of like the way they've done this. And from I'm visualizing what it's going to feel like already. And I, you know, obviously I don't know, but I think this could actually work. <laughs> and it, it's it's got to be better than what we have from the stock shifter because there's not much there. That, no doubt about that. Right. So again, not too complicated as far as putting this together. And we do have one more piece. Because the boot is going away, the leather boot in that ringer is going away, and we're just going to have this showing, I actually include a, actually it feels, it's a kind of a fibery decal that's going to go on top of there. Let's see if you can see the, actually see that grain, but yeah, there's actually, see how that is? So you can actually feel the grain. Very cool decal, actually. I like this, this vinyl, whatever it is they're using here. Pretty nice. In fact, it says something on the back there, but I'm not sure. <laughs> who makes this right so yeah there you have it uh, not a whole lot going on here as far as replacing it the busiest one's going to be this guy believe it or not not so much this one because we have to take this nut off and then we have to unscrew this this all the way out if you saw my review initial review of the g29 shifter then you'll you'll know what i'm talking about we've got a nut on the top of this arm and on the bottom here all that's got to come out and we'll just leave these sitting here though they can just stay where they're at and then we'll just slide the other one so I'm putting the nuts in each side of these. So one nut will go in there and the other one will go on the other side and then capture it all. And I believe I'm going to put this in this way so the you can see that it's, there's an offset there. See that? And I want the offset to go inwards, I think. I think that's the, the more compact way to do it. And you could do it the other way though and then it would actually give you a larger spread this way so I imagine either way it'll work in fact I might even do it that way because if you do it this way you can see we're going to get more of a spread towards the outboard direction right so being wider it's got to be better when we're trying to clamp something instead of putting it on this side and making it it's still wider but it's on the inside would it really make that much difference probably not and they don't designate which way to do it as far as I can see in instructions so It'll work either way, obviously. It, it's just personal preference how you want it to look. Maybe you have a problem with something that's close to your shifter and you can't do that because it's gonna stick out too far. And yeah, then you can position it the other way. So it's nice to have that option. Right, so that's it. That's a closer look. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and start putting all this together. Okay, so now what we'll do is actually install the mods. Now, first we'll go ahead and do the actually do these feet that are part of the clamping mechanism and of course we're going to change them over to these guys wider and got the rubbery piece if you saw the closer look segment you know how these are working so first off the way this thing works is there's a very long screw down in there threaded rod if you will and there is a nut on the top of this arm and there's also a nut embedded on the bottom of this arm and of course, we also have a capturing nut that captures the whole thing and spins freely. A little acorn nut there on the bottom. See how that works? And as we turn this, it raises and lowers this arm along that threaded rod. Pretty simple, really, and effective, actually, too. So what I'll usually do is before I try to take one of these off, I try to get it all the way down so there's less thread to have to undo while I'm trying to replace the other one. And as mentioned in the Closer Look segment, I am going to be... There's two different ways we can put this in. As you can see, there's an offset here. And I'm going to want the offset pointing inwards towards the shifter, like this. Because of the side here, I don't want this offset. If I had this one on here, the offset would actually be sticking out further than the shifter does where it's going to bump up against my 8020 profile. So if I have this one on here, I can get the shifter a little bit closer to me, right? And it's nice that it, they actually have an offset like that, so you can actually swap them around and do whatever you want to do. So, let's go ahead and go ahead and get this going here. And this is a 10 mil acorn nut here. The first thing I'm doing, I'm going to turn the knob here to help me out. First thing I want to do is break that loose. And that's easy about just spinning counterclockwise on both pieces. And now the acorn nut is loose, I'm just simply going to unscrew it. And you can see it's got that smooth top on it and the threads exposed inside. Typical acorn nut. Right, so now, remember there's a nut on the bottom of this, and I think you can see that through here. See that nut on there? It's embedded in the arm, and there's another one on top over here. 
So the one on top, I'm going to leave on a threaded rod. And I'm just going to bring this up far enough. I'm going to have to get this. I'm going to turn it counterclockwise and get the threads to come all the way into the, this arm here, bringing the threads in to where it disengages that bottom nut. And then I should be able to get it out. So let's give that a whirl here and see what happens. I'm just going to kind of steady it with this hand while I'm doing the screwing part. Let's see if I can get you guys to watch that. There we go. So it should come loose, and I should be able to pull this knob once it disengages that bottom nut. And there it goes. So now I can move it in and out. And that other nut is still staying on there, as you can see. I think you can see that. There it is. Right, and we have one stuck in the bottom here. So we have to get that out. No big deal. I'll just take the other end of my pointer here and just press on either side of the nut as I kind of work it out. Well, I <laughs> didn't have to do that. It came out a lot easier. Cool. So now that that's out, and I'm using, I remember I wanted the offset to go inside, so I'm going to use this one. So that offset is, is going to be that way. And I'm going to use this one. And all I'm going to do is go ahead and put the nut on the bottom. You can see it has a place for it there. See that hexagon type opening there. And it should just press right in. There we go. All right. Now, what we're going to do is raise this far enough to get this whole thing in here like we, we did going bringing the other one out, rather. And then go ahead and... Now, we're going to have to seat this nut in the top of this arm. So I'm just going to push it in there. And there it goes. It did a pretty good job there. It actually captured it pretty well. Although it's not all the way in there. So you get a look at that. It will go all the way in once we tighten everything up. So now I'm just going to engage. And you want to make sure this nut, by the way, on the bottom is nice and seated flat. So you don't cross thread anything when you're going back in to the arm and the nut. So I'm just going to put that back. Make sure it's in the channel there. And I'm just going to kind of keep threading this down until it engages that nut. And I feel it when it does that. And if you get any resistance, you need to stop and then check again and make sure it hasn't tilted on you or something because you strip these threads out and it's just going to be a pain to have to find another net and a nut rather and maybe even fix the threads with a die on your, your shaft here <laughs> or the threaded shaft. So looks like we did pretty good there. It's coming out the bottom. You see there? And I need s some exposed, obviously, to get my acorn nut back on. And I'll just go ahead and put that back on, holding this on the other side and there we go and now i'll take my 10 mil nut or rather i will take my 10 mil wrench to the 10 mil nut and just snug it up a little you don't really have to tighten it up a lot because it's a free rotating thing anyway it just it's not like trying to bind up something so it just rotates pretty freely now all you got to do is rotate it counterclockwise and you can see our arm is raising as it should so successful that's pretty easy Really, it's, it's just to keep from, you know, the only thing you really got to watch out for, I think, is the cross-threading thing to make sure that nut is sitting like it should. And what I'll do now is just speed it up to put the other one on because, well, you already know how it goes on. So there we go. Now we've got both of those put in. Pretty simple, really. And now all we have to do is install the last piece of this part, which is the stronger clamps mod. And that just fits right over that threaded piece. So yeah. And of course, the pressure from whatever we're clamping against is going to keep that on there. So we don't have to worry about it coming off. Right. Couldn't be easier. Now what we're going to do is get to the actual build of the improved feel mod. Now, if you saw the Closer Look segment, you know that this is part of the Improved Field Mod. And we have another piece, this little, I don't know what I'm going to call this, a cam follower or something. But really, it's, it's a retainer for the shaft of the shifter. And again, you can see the little indentations in there that are going to give us that click feeling once we're going from the bottom gears to the top gears to neutral and back and forth. And it's very it's thin not very thin but it's thin enough here that gives the friction as we're pushing it and we're going to want to lube that up these flat spots here these flat pieces and you don't really have to lube these holes up just the flat spot and a couple other things we're going to have to lube up too which is go ahead and get this over here these are the internal parts we're going to use to capture this cam mechanism 
Uh, I guess that's the best way to call it, slider mechanism. And we want to capture that in between these bolts. And if you watch the closer look segment, you know what I was talking about, or I am talking about rather. Now, there, are, there is a way to do this, and there's only one way to do it. You have to go in one way with the bolt, in the, because there's actually slots cut on the sides here, or on the other side where it captures the bolt and you screw into, that actually captures a, let's see if I can get my pointer in there, actually captures the nut that we're going to be screwing that bolt into, right? Now, I've already got one in there on the other side, and it's not easy to see it. Maybe it's come out again on me. <laughs> Maybe that's why I can't see it, yeah. Okay, so the idea here is we want to get this nut down into that little hole that captures this nut, and it's shaped in the same shape that this nut is, so we don't have to put a wrench on it when we're tightening things down. But it can be a little tricky to get this done. You have to kind of, and it's hard, really good, difficult for me to show you how I'm doing this, I'm just kind of positioning it up to where it needs to go and then kind of pushing down and end on it, in on it, trying to get it seat to seat into that cavity and be lined up with the hole. You can see it's kind of sitting there right here. I'm going to get a light on you so you can see that. But it's still a little crooked, and we don't want it crooked. We want it flat. So what I'm going to do is take the end of this, which is a nice steel, hard steel part, and see if I can get this to sit down in that cavity like I want it to. That looks pretty good actually. All right. So again, not going to be easy for you to see it in there, but there, eh, maybe you can. There it is. So I've actually pressed it down into that cavity. And I'm going to do one at a time so we don't get anything messed up. Now the point of the, of the object is to go ahead and get this sleeve to go in one of these holes because this is what it's going to be sliding against, which is nice because this is a very slick material on top. And we're going to grease that up too just for make sure nothing gets bound up anywhere. And it's kind of loose in there, so I don't really see it binding that much. Anyway, so we'll go ahead and set this kind of down in between those two holes, and then we'll take our bolt and slide it in the hole and get it to go inside that tube. At least that's the idea. And the tube is cut pretty much where it needs to be to fill that space up, at least far enough to where we have this sliding back and forth and it goes all the way and hits that so it's still on the tube. Now also we want to, now that we're going into we're going to have to actually go into that nut which means we have to kind of push this bolt into that sleeve and into the hole where the nut is but we run out of pushing room on this part of it because you see it's going into a recessed hole. So you just take your wrench it's a 2.5 mil by the way on these and just kind of push it in with your wrench. But here's the thing. I've got my nut in here, all right? <laughs> so I don't want the bolt or the, this screw pushing that nut back out of where I just had it. So I'm going to put my finger in here and kind of capture it. And with my fingernail there, I'm just going to keep pressure against that nut as I'm pushing this in because I don't want it to. And then once I get to a certain, I feel some resistance, I'm going to start screwing it or turning it and hopefully... There we go. Now I just felt it go into this other piece here. Now it should be resting up against the nut. Now if all goes well, this should actually just go in and get grab the nut and screw into it. So yeah, it seems like it might be working. There we go. Now it actually worked. So the nut did not get pushed out. You can see it's still in there over here. And it's got the threads sticking out of it. So that's a good sign. Now you don't want to tighten this a lot. Because remember, this is PLA material. You torque down too much on this bolt here, or this screw, whatever you want to call it, and you're going to make that nut turn inside of that little piece where it's captured at over here. And that's just going to strip out the PLA, and now it's just going to freely turn. You won't be able to tighten it again. And yeah, it's just something you really don't need a lot of torque on it. Just want to get in there and snug it up. I usually use my fingertips to kind of tell where I need to be. And that feels about right. Okay, so there we have it. Now this thing is going to slide back and forth freely, and of course we're going to have to do the same thing down here. And I'll just speed that up because now that you saw me do one side, the other side exactly the same, and I'll speed this up because I still need to get my nut put in over here and then do the whole process over again. So we'll go ahead and speed that up now.
Okay, and you can see even speed it up, that was a little bit fiddly on the nuts out over there, which is, you know, you just got to be patient and it'll, <laughs> it'll, it'll eventually go in for you. Now you can see we have both of these on, it's not really flopping around anymore. It's actually got a little bit of friction on it as it moves across those slick surfaces. And again, pretty much this is the installation. All we have to do now is put this cover over here on the shifter. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and put the grease on. Now I'm using this particular grease. Any grease will do that doesn't have any effect on plastics or rubber. Usually if it doesn't corrode rubber seals, the chances are it's not gonna hurt your plastics either like PLA or this plastic tubing, whatever that is that they're using. So I just take a little bit of that and I'll dab it Use a little Q-tip here because there's a, I got a million of them and they really do this kind of job pretty well. And we're just gonna, it doesn't take much, just a little bit. You don't need to gook it on so it's squishing everywhere when the mechanism is working. You just need to give it a little service to move on. And then I'll move this over and do the same over here to the sides that were not exposed before. Very simple here actually. Now, we've got that part done. It actually is moving easier, as you might imagine, right? So, but we still need some lube on this part, these flat parts of this actual follower here. And so I'll get a little bit on there. And again, less is more, really, in these cases. I just want to get some dabs on there. And this is also something that you'll be able to do for maintenance. So if you're, as you're using this, you'll probably want to do this to keep it nice and lubricated while you're using it. This will, will actually increase the life cycle of this follower here. Even though you can go on their site and buy extra ones because this is, as we said before in the closer look, a wear item. Eventually, it's gonna get loose on you as far as shifting back and forth because yeah, even with grease, there's gonna be some wear and tear there. Right, so now we've greased everything up. Let me put that away and try to keep from getting grease all over everything and keep our paper towels handy. Right, so now all we've got to do is take this off. And I believe, yeah, we're gonna have to pop this little cover off. See how this pops off? Very easy. It's got those little arms on it that snap in and out of the top of that knob. And we're going to need something that I don't have here, <laughs> but I have over here pretty handy. We're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver because there's actually a small Phillips screw inside of that shifter. See the light will catch it for you there. Right, easy enough. Just get down there and unscrew it. And it's a very small one. It doesn't really go very deep, I don't think. Now there it is. Go ahead and get it out. And there's our knob. Again, our nice leather coated knob. Feels good when you're shifting it with the bare hand. This is the Phillips screw. It is a machine thread because it is a machine thread inside this metal shaft. And it's got some Loctite on it. Right, so now what we want to do is, of course, pull the boot off. And that's going to be quick with this. And again, these are 2.5 millimeter hexes on here, and I'm just going to use my 2.5 millimeter wrench, obviously. So we'll go ahead and speed that up. All right, so we've got all the screws out now. We should be able to lift this up rather easily, and we can. And it slides right off as one unit. Now. There is a little locator tab in this if you want to go back to stock sometime. And there you can see it there. That goes into the back just so you have it oriented properly when you put this back on because there is a radius to this top. See that? Kind of flows with this shifter. Right, so now that we have that off, we're not going to be putting it back on. And if you look at my original review of this shifter, I took it apart and you can you understand what I'm talking about, that there's a rod in here. See if you can see it. See that rod that attaches, it goes through this shaft, and the end of that rod's been flanged out. And those flanges actually fit down into those grooves there. See those? Into the side plates, those metal side plates. So there's really no gate in here, if you will. It's, it's all a simulated gate. And when you're in neutral, if we can get it back in neutral, you push it over and bring it back, that flange piece captures that side sheet metal over there. And that's what creates the shift. And it will still be doing that, all right? This gate really is not going to be changing that, the gate you see on top of here. So all we really have to do is take this and keep it oriented properly. And there is an arrow in here that we have covered up now. But anyway, 
there's an arrow under this bar here that points forward, so you want it to kind of go this way. You want the fat part, you can see the difference here. You want the, the thicker part to go towards the back. And we'll just go ahead and slide it down onto the shaft. And remember, these holes here are recessed on this piece. And I think it should sit down inside of this. Oops. I think it's supposed to sit down. See what I'm talking about here? This, this internal groove here? I think this is supposed to sit down on top of that. So it goes in the front. But the back, it doesn't seem like it might be able to well, I might be able to squeeze it a little bit and get it to pop in there. But really, it's kind of moot point at this, at, at this point because what I really want to do is get my screws back in. And you'll notice how this top is cut, and we don't have much here as far as width. So we want to maintain the same width we had on this ring so we can use the exact same screws, right? So that's the point, or that's what we're trying to do. So let's see if we can get these things started. And usually to start something like this, it's jiggling all around. I try to use just a hand wrench because then I can kind of move things around and find the screw hole, just like that, and then get it started. But just get it started. You don't want to tighten everything down yet. So now that I'm looking at it, as long as that screw engages back here, we really don't have to have this piece, I don't think, sitting inside the lip. However, being the perfectionist that I am, I like to see that happen. There it goes. Yeah, so once we have things tightened down, I think we'll be able to make that happen even easier. So what we'll do now is obviously speed things up and we're just going to get all the screws back in and around here and then we'll be able to see what this thing feels like. All right, so you can see there, there was a little bit of a struggle there to get this to go on because I, you have to move it around a little bit and I had the, some of the screws a little bit too tight prematurely so that prevented me from moving it where I needed to. So just had to loosen a couple of them back up and then we could go back in and get it lined up properly. Had to kind of skew it sideways to get it lined up properly. Again, typical of the kind of aftermarket mods and things we get, I think. Uh, yeah, so anyway, it's on there. So all we gotta do now is put our shifter back on and this sh shifter handle actually is key to that shaft. See how that's a flat spot there? There's a corresponding flat spot there and that is along the threads here. So the threads are going to go right on like that. And of course all we have to do is take our screw, our little Phillips screw here, and get that back in. And then we should be ready to test this thing out. I'm going to turn it sideways there so it goes in a little easier. So we'll go ahead and snug that down. And our cap, we got, there's a pattern on here. We match it when we put it back on. So we have our pattern correct. And there it is. Right, so, oops, I lost my uh, top part here. <laughs> but that's just sitting on top, so that's, that's not a surprise. All right, so initially, I'm trying to put some pressure on this while I do this. Wow, that is definitely a tighter shift. Huh, okay. So, my only question is, it's working. It's definitely a improved feel, <laughs> like it says. But my only question is going to be how long, and in fact, I might dab some more grease on there, on this piece here, now that I have it in. And, you know, you tend to do these things after, as you're installing something. You, you see it as it's going in. And you'll think to yourself, well, maybe we'll just do something a little bit different or do a little extra here. So I'm just going to put an extra dab on each one of those flat spots because it is definitely tight. Now I just want to make sure there's plenty of lube in there. Got some on my plate here. Not good because i got to put my decal on there, right? 
Remember, we're still going to be putting our little decal on. And that'll slide right past that, so that's not a problem. All right, so we got a little more grease on there. Yeah, this might actually work. I mean, it actually does work, but I'm thinking, yeah, this might actually be a much, it's definitely stiffer, a lot stiffer than it was before when we made our shifts. And we've actually got some gates we're going in now, which really, I don't think really matters, but it might, it might help as far as locating because once you're in those side plates that I showed you before, once you're over and in that side plate with that flanged rod and you're going back and forth, it is nice to go into an extra piece of gate though. So yeah, that's, that's not too bad actually. So I think we can say we're successfully installed this now. And all we're going to do now is, well, before I actually put it on mounted and start shifting, I'm going to go ahead and put this carbon fiber sticker on here. And that'll give us that carbon fiber look. And I showed you in the closer look that this actually has a, a, a texture to this thing. So it's pretty cool, actually. I like this sticker. Right. So what we'll do is stick the sticker on. And when we come back, we'll have it mounted up and take a look at how that worked out. Right, so now we have it mounted to the rig, and I'm actually using two pieces of 4040 profile here. And go down here and look, you can see I have the everything engaged rather tightly. And just the clamping pressure is a noticeable improvement. I can tell that already, that yeah, it just feels uh, tighter on these than it was before without it. Which makes sense now that we have that rubbery material up against that 8020 profile instead of the just the hard plastic piece. Right. So we've got the carbon fiber on there, as you can see. And it looks, well, it looks pretty decent, I guess. It looks better than just the PLA showing. <laughs> now, actually, so far, and just, just by having it bolted on here and trying to shift it a, a little bit here and there, it really feels pretty good. Let me give you a demonstration here if I can keep the camera steady enough. And yet, yeah, it's really is a better feel to it than it was before. And the whole shifter is not moving as much as it was, which obviously is going to improve the tactile feedback. Just how much, we won't know until we're in and driving, which is what we'll be doing next. All right, so here we are in iRacing, and we're in the Lotus 79 at Sebring. Again, my favorite combination for testing things. First off, with the shifter is you can see when I'm shifting here if you notice there the housing is not moving anymore it's it's just very stiffly mounted now because of the wider grip that we're getting with the the two arms that are on the bottom of the the claws I'm just call them claws that grab the bottom and of course the little rubber the rubbery inserts that TPU material is doing its job and yeah it's really just that when I, when I first mounted it on there and had it nice and tight like this. I've never had it this tight because of the other pieces of plastic. The claws there, well, they're, they're twice as thin, number one. They don't have the rubber on them, which I suppose you could like in, put a piece of rubber underneath them and improve that just with those. But it, it's also an improvement on the lateral shifting, and this being an H pattern, that matters. The lateral shifting tactile feedback you get because of the wider claws under there are spreading the load out further, so you get a nice solid feel no matter which direction you're going in. And again, just watch this thing as I'm hammering on it. It's not moving at all, the housing. And I don't think I've ever seen a G29 in a video do that. It, most of the time, they're always rocking back and forth or something. And yeah, so just that alone is a big improvement. Now let's move on to the improvement feel bit, which is really that cam follower. I'm, I don't know a better way to describe it because it's, you know, it's actually following the shifting shaft through the H pattern. So anyway, it's really adding a good tactile feedback when you go through the gears and you're going from like third to fourth or fourth to third. And it's just nice click tactile feel now to it. And that's something that I wasn't expecting so much. And yeah, I have to say, I'm, I'm pretty pleased with what I'm feeling here on this shifter. And just with these two mods on it, I didn't think they would have as much impact as they have. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised, caught me a little bit off guard here and I, I thought it would be maybe a little improvement, but not what I'm feeling here. And of course, it also matters that this is a short pattern, a very short pattern type shifter. It's not a very long throw on it, like comparatively talking about, let's say, the TH-8A from Thrustmaster. It's a, a longer throw for sure. 
but this, even with the short throw mods on it, it's still a longer throw than this. It feels like it anyway. But I like a short throw shifter, and this is really feeling pretty good. I, I really, yeah, like I said, caught me off guard a little bit here. I didn't expect it to, to feel this good and for these mods to be able to do what they do. Now, of course, we don't know how long that cam is going to last in there. So if I bought the improvement mod for my G29 or 27, whatever the case may be, I would actually probably buy at least one of them so that if it does wear in the future, you can just take the old one out, put the new one in, re-grease it, and then you can off to the races, right? So again, I've got a few hours into this. I haven't noticed any degradation in the tactile feedback of clicking in between the gears now, which there is definitely a nice click going on where there was nothing before. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's what I would do. So overall, I'm pretty pleased with what uh, the 3D Wrap has got going on here. I, I did not expect this at all. And uh, having actually some fun using the shifter with all this new tactile feel you have on it, the muscle memory is easy to develop too for it. So don't miss any gears. It's just, yeah, pretty happy. So what we'll do next is, yeah, just go ahead and get to the final thoughts of these uh, mods to the G29 shifter. Final thoughts on these two 3D wrap mods for the G29 shifter. You know, as a sim drivers and, well, just as guys in general, we can't help but be on the lookout for a mod that will change, for the better we hope, <laughs> the way a controller feels or works. Even if we're happy with it, how it performs currently, we just can't seem to help it, it seems. Or at least I can't help it. <laughs> so when I first got a 3D wrap mod from my Thrustmaster TH8A shifter, while I was on their site, I had a look around at other mods they made. As it turns out, there are a lot of them. And when I saw the two mods we were reviewing here, I know I had to get them just to see if they could really improve the vague tactile feedback that the G29 shifter has in its stock configuration. And it didn't take long for me to find the answer. Simply put, the combination of the stronger clamp mod and improved field mod made it seem like I was using a different shifter altogether. It actually caught me a bit by surprise. The shifter now feels as if it has come alive in your hand. The tactile feedback that these mods add is quite noticeable. Now, I have this unit feeling like a proper H-pattern shifter for once. <laughs> a much more involving or immersive experience when driving. The only question mark here is the durability of the 3D printed PLA cam part. It is a friction part and of course it is going to wear down with use. Fortunately, the guys at 3D Wrap are aware of this and do offer that part as something that you can purchase by itself. Also, if you consider that the G29 shifter costs $60 and these two mods, including the carbon fiber sticker that I used, combined cost about $46 shipped, now our good feeling G29 has cost us a bit over $100 and only you can decide if it's worth it or not. <laughs> I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching The Sim Racing Garage. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and help support what we do here at the SRG by visiting our website at simracinggarage.com.